Hi guys, it's Tracy. Welcome to Country Charm by Tracy. Today I'm going to do a country watermelon wreath uh, tutorial here with you. Just kind of share uh, from start to finish how I do my wreaths. Now I do want to preference this by saying that I was inspired. I was scrolling Facebook one day in one of the wreath groups that I am in. I was inspired by a wreath that I saw the link will be uh, in the description below of that inspiration because this was not my idea and I greatly appreciate people sharing, you know, and that's what we all do as wreath makers and crafters. We just share for inspiration, but I definitely do want to give credit where credit is due. All right, guys, what I'm going to do is I am working off an, of an 18 inch grapevine and uh, I picked this one up from Michael's and uh, uh, so this is the wreath that I'm going to be working off of. The watermelon is from Hobby Lobby. I got it. It was in the spring collection. And so it's um, already painted really cute. I love it. I have just different greeneries and some flowers and then some different ribbons that I'm going to be making the bow because when I saw the inspiration and if you click over and, and see the picture uh, on the link, you'll see I'm like, oh my goodness, I think I have almost all of that. I didn't have the ribbon, but I didn't want to make it exactly you know the way that that she made it uh, or the the creator made it but um let me turn this down. I have my electric glue pot that I got from Amazon a few years ago. I'm not sure if they're still available, but um, I just melt when I'm doing wreaths like this, I melt my hot glue in a glue skillet. It's a very, very hot, but what I usually do is I turn it up to like get it going. And then once it starts melting, then I turn it down. So if you see some steam coming up, it's coming from my glue pot. Okay, if you are not familiar with working with grapevines, um, they can be a little wiry. Almost every grapevine that you get is different. Uh, this is an 18 inch grapevine and uh, some of them are a little bit more wily or whatever than others. Um, if some of the little sticks bother you, you can always trim it. I have watched other wreath makers do that. Um, unless it's a really sticking out, I don't like, I, I like the whimsiness part of it. Uh, so one thing that I do like to do is make a hanger for my wreaths. And uh, so for this one, I'm gonna do it when I, um, you know, before I get started. But I like to get this grapevine wire. This is from the floral section. You can get them at different craft stores, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, uh, Michaels, that kind of thing. And uh, what I like to do is I have it in brown and then more of the natural color. So just depending on which color I want to use, I make a hanger for it. So I just untwist just use my little cutters just cut that off and I kind of determine what I which way or what what I want the top to be I think I want this to be the top and then I use the I just thread it through, just thread it through the grapevine, and I give it a good, a good twist on itself, you know, so that way it's not going to come undone. Sometimes I use my, my needle nose pliers to kind of get a good twist in there. And so then when I have my hanger on, I want to keep just enough so that, you know, my customer can hang it on their door or on their, their hook. I want to keep enough of it so that they can, you know, hang it on their door like that. To, uh, I just wanna go ahead and put my pipe cleaners on my sign. Now, um, what I have is this is this sign, our little watermelon wedge. 
um, I'm going to staple some pipe cleaners on the back. And so how I do that is, let me move this out of the way. I have an electric staple gun. If you don't have an electric one, you can use a manual one. Uh, but what I do is I, I usually just twist the pipe cleaner uh, kind of in a knot where it kind of, uh, you know, kind of bunches it up a little. And then I have this, oops, and I give it two good staples. A good crafter always has a rubber mallet. Sorry for the, the sound, but I always keep this in my craft room for projects like this. And uh, so I chose this brown because it's kind of the same color as my wreath. So I have these ficus leaves that I picked up, um, I've had in my stash uh, or on hand for a few years. These actually, these particular ones came from Walmart and um, like I said, I've, I've had them a couple of years. So um, I usually just find supplies wherever I can get them. Anyway, so I don't like these bendy ones like this. I don't like cut them apart. I, I, these came on like a very long stem that I, for storage purposes, I had cut it off. So I will use to advantage, um, to advantage, I'm sorry. I will use the, uh, you know, stems and stuff to my advantage. So my, my um, hook is up here my hanger and so I just want to kind of start positioning around I love the whimsiness of this ficus and sometimes the little leaves fall off but we'll figure out a place for that and um, I'm not gluing or anything at the moment if I want it to tack this down, I'm going to let it kind of flow freely because I still have quite a bit of stuff I want to put on. And uh, so I want to figure out where my bow is going to go. I'm going to kind of put my bow up here and my watermelon here. So I don't want to. You know, I want to keep that in mind. So these are two bushes of these ficus. So I'm just sticking it through the grapevine, kind of like where the grapevine twist goes through. And I know some wreath, are, some wreath makers uh, do better with their stuff like up on a little pedestal or a hanger or something. But me, I prefer to design on my table. So this is how it is so far. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put my bow here and then my watermelon's gonna go right here. Different greenery for texture and depth. And so this is a rosemary bush that I picked up at Walmart. And so I'm just taking it apart. Sometimes the little wires are a little, little wiry. And so I have my steel picks machine. I'm just gonna put a steel picks on that.
Fix machine is something that I picked up at Walmart. Uh, it's not something that you need to have, but what it does is it puts this, um, this still picks on the edge of it and, uh, it, it's a sharp, very sharp edge and it's easier for, you know, wreath makers to kind of start putting their stuff in. I need to heat it up a little bit more. <clears throat> so we'll start working on our others. And then I have this greenery. This is one of my favorite greeneries from Hobby Lobby. I am a big advocate for that. Love me some Hobby Lobby. Just using my little plier, my wire cutters, just to cut this off. Not quite sure how many stems I'm going to need. My glue is heat, heated up as much as, you know, it gives me the consistency that I want. And uh, so I just dip that in there. It'll continue to heat. And I just, you know, put it in between those branches. I make sure that it's not sticking out on the back because I don't want it to scratch the customer's door. Okay. And I'm gonna leave this space because that is where I'm planning to put my bow right there. So I don't wanna cover that up. I need, maybe need to make my bow. I just kind of am putting some glue on that steel picks and uh, just kind of propping in my greenery. This ficus is going this way near the hanger and then this ficus is going this way. My wooden watermelon is going to go right there. And just putting some glue on the still picks. I am just putting it in through there. It's looking really good with all those different textures. So again, my bow's gonna go about right here. My wooden watermelon right there. And, uh, you know, just to kind of make sure that it is visually, you know, appealing to the eye. And my ficus is trying to attack, attack my other uh, greenery that I have going over here. Okay, let's see, we wanna put this larger greenery. I'm also going to be adding some cute little flowers. And so, um, like always check just to make sure that the steel pick didn't come, you know, that it's not uh, going to poke out through the back and make sure that that is a bent down so that it does not scratch the door or a wall wherever the customer puts it. Okay, so that's where we're at at the moment. All of the ribbons that I kind of pulled out of this and actually all of these came from Hobby Lobby as I'm looking at them and uh, this one came from the Dollar Tree so we're going to see what we can do with this. When I said all that ribbon came from Hobby Lobby I was mistaken this one this red with the black dots came from Craft Outlet. So I'm just using my Easy Bow Maker and I want to kind of figure out how long I kind of want my tails a little bit longer 
so um, I can always cut off. I'm, I'm leaving them about, made, making about a 14 inch tail and about a five and a half inch loop. And I put it through the little holder and make uh, make a twist. So then my loops are consistent. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut off my tail for this one. So then next I'm not going to make quite a, a long, <laughs> not going to make quite as long of a tail. I'm just going to make it about five inches. Twist it. And I'm going to make this a little just a smidgen I'm gonna make this at five inches on the loop twist it Okay, so I just have a pipe cleaner that I'm just going to slide it, kind of lift up my bow a little bit so that I can slide it off without losing its form. And I just take my, my pipe cleaner and I kind of go around so that it gathers it. And then I just slide it up where everything is together so I don't lose it. And I twist. Pull it as tight as I can. And I twist my bow. as tight as I can until I get, you know, until I get it, twist it very tight. So now let me get my fluff box and we're gonna fluff it out. My little fluff box that I got from Pro Bow the Hand and it has a small little eye hook on, on this. And uh, I just twist my pipe cleaners around it, or pipe cleaner, 
so that it kind of holds it in place. Just want to kind of dovetail these to clean them up. And it was, my bow wasn't too bad. Just want to make sure that all the tails are around the way that I want them to be. I uh, brought my wreath back over and this is how my bow turned out. I fluffed up a little bit and trimmed some of that. And uh, so um, also I just want to kind of find the placement. So I'm just threading through the pipe cleaner in the back. I use that to thread it through the branches to secure it in place. attach my uh, little pipe uh, little pipe cleaner little watermelon and so once I tried it I just I discovered that I had my uh, pipe cleaners a little bit too far over so I restapled them and uh, you know so that it wasn't I didn't measure very well <laughs> so then now I'm just gonna thread this through okay change of plans I did not like the way that the pipe cleaners held on the uh, uh, watermelon slice so I'm going back to my trusty because I want my I'm, I'm gonna uh, this is my drill my electric drill and I'm gonna drill two holes in this and attach wire to it and uh, I'll make it look cute because I will uh, include enough wire to make some little curly cues where it looks like it's all tied in together but i just i didn't like the way that it was laying with the pipe cleaners so um this is what i'm going to do Okay, to get my watermelon wedge the way that I want it to sit, I ended up having to uh, drill two small holes and I wired on some black wire. Now I get this wire at the uh, Dollar Tree if I can find it in the automotive section. It is my favorite. It's very uh, pliable. And uh, so what I did is I just threaded the watermelon wedge through through the, the watermelon wood slice and then I threaded it through the grapevine and so then I, I give it like a twist um, you know to kind of hold it and so I'm gonna trim off a little bit I always cut a little bit more than what I think I need and uh, then I'm gonna use a very small thin um, paintbrush or a dowel would work <clears throat> and um, I just twist I do some curly cues to kind of twist up and I'll hold it up so that you can see might need a little thinner brush let me see yeah this one's a little bit thinner And then I take my uh, needle nose pliers and I bend down the edge or the end of the of the wire so that it's not pokey. Kind of bend it over on itself so that I have some little curly cues. And then it just kind of looks like it's part of the decoration kind of gives a, a bit of whimsy and cuteness what I like okay so bend those bend this one down too okay there we go. 
Okay, I can put some greenery here or something like that to kind of mask it if I want to, but I think that it looks really cute. And then um, I'm, we're ready to put on some flowers and then we're gonna, you know, make sure our bow and everything is all nice and cute. The part right here is kind of hanging down and I was trying to get it to sit underneath there. So I said, you know what? I guess it's telling me that it doesn't want to be there that I can trim it off and put it over here. Yep, that's exactly what it was telling me. I need another little piece underneath there. So let me grab something. Okay. These flowers right here I picked up from Walmart. And these are called Hop Clover Pick. machine needs to be reloaded and I don't have time to do that so I'm going to get this filmed and finished so I like to use the steel pick because I feel that it um, you know just sticks in the grapevine a little bit better but you don't necessarily have to use it it's just something that I have on hand and I decided to use so I'm just sticking in the hop clover bush just like this just adding the greenery and I mean the uh, flowers in there. Just getting in between those branches, not coming out to the back side, but just where it's all. And then once the hot glue, once it all sets up, it'll be just fine. Everything glues up nicely together. Perfect. So this is turning out so stinking cute. I just love all the, I might, I might end up cutting those tails a little bit more. This little, uh, the tag was a Michaels tag, so I picked this up from Michaels one year. Anyway, it had it has said Gerber on the tag, so I guess these are a little Gerber, uh, mini Gerber daisies. And so I'm just gonna cut off some of these. kind of hold down the bow as well everything whoops everything kind of works all together and if I have a flower that kind of comes off that easy I make sure that I glue that little sinker back on I turn my hot glue pot up so that it would heat up This is looking so adorable. I 
and yes this glue pot is hot I just buy the Gorilla Glue sticks and just cut them up and put them in there. I, um, you know, to get it to heat up fast, I just turn it up. But then once it starts smoking, I'm like, okay, we're are ready to roll. You know, whatever is appealing to your eye will depend on how, you know, you position everything. Make sure, All right, nothing is sticking out on the back. <laughs> 